the villains in this are absolutely excellent. Noel Conlon's General Smythe, uh, who is, on one hand, the typical blustering World War I general, and on the other, has definitely something odd going on. And you can see the oddness in the performance from moment one. David Garfield is, is von Weizsäcker. It's interesting because um, he's the officer in the German uh, trenches in the First World War zone, and then also um, in the office in, in the American Civil War zone as well. But he does have that, and very much like Noel Coleman as, as Smythe. You know, of course, you know, he said he's got his monocle. Um, that once he once he gets that in, he's uh, he's irresistible. We are in the British Army, Private Moore. Yeah, it's 1871. David Garfield. He was a very nice guy to get on with, you know, very companionable. I think he's the kind of man who tends to sit with women. Both Wendy and I confessed that we fancied him. And we thought it was quite interesting, but he was a short, bald-headed Welshman. How could a short, well, you know, in theory, he couldn't be that attractive, but he was. This is the war chief to all guard posts, closed section areas. Detain two resistance members. Edward Bradshaw was doing demon king acting. You know, I, I said at the time, he ought to have a green spotlight on him, really, you know, and hit his and booze from the audience. Edward Brayshaw is just a fantastic performance. Um, it's full of anger and point and direction. You sort of sympathise with him quite often. He's clearly more interesting than the aliens he's working with. He is one of my own race. Your truth machine cannot work on us if we choose to resist. He's got that Time Lord difference to him, that Time Lord arrogance. And when he and um, Patrick Troughton first meet, you don't get dialogue about it for quite a little while, but they recognise and know each other. You and I are going to talk alone. I have nothing to say to you. Again, without directly telling the audience what's going on. And that's lovely, the fact that those two actors are aware exactly what they have to do with that and do it. He was doing, like, stage minutes, pantomime minutes. That would wipe out the processed humans. Oh, Philip Maddock was doing real minutes. The Resistance Army must be crushed once and for all. Very, very quiet, saying, we seem to be having some problems here. Things are not quite going as they should. And you go, <gasps> everybody shivers. Now, I am tired of this eternal bickering. Your inability to work together is endangering our whole plan. The most wonderful voice, I think. Philip has his lovely growl. And of course his Welshness, which is, because I'm partly Welsh, as he's I appealed to me. We shall attempt to be rather more subtle than that, which will give you an ideal opportunity to prove your loyalty. And save your life. He was so controlled, Philip, mm. in that. He was so cool. If he was playing a baddie so differently to Ed Edward. You know, they couldn't mm. have been more different. I worked a lot with Philip Mack. I first cast him in the Crotons, then in the War Games, and then uh, when I directed The Last of the Mohicans, I cast him as Magua, the villain. Magua! Took the hatchet to cover it with blood! When it is red, it will be buried. I had great admiration for him, and uh, and I saw him as an ultimate villain, and uh, and we worked together very well. <laughs>